Hello and welcome to the marketplace. Here's what's coming up in the next 30 minutes. Oil marketing companies ordered to halt all third-party distribution of petroleum products. It comes as Ghana loses 4.6 billion CDs in revenue to evasion of taxes by some unscrupulous companies. We have more as the MPA launches the National Retail Outlet Fuel Monitoring System. Also, Bank of Ghana moves to abolish unfair fees, charges and other practices in the banking sector. Plus, consumer trust in fish has waned after shoals of fish were washed ashore across some beaches in the country. What are the implications? We will find out in the course of the bulletin. Once again, you're welcome to the program. My name is Charles Aita. We have more after this break. Welcome. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Balmia, has ordered all oil marketing companies to halt third-party distribution of petroleum products. Now, this order comes on the back of Ghana losing 4.6 billion CDs in taxes each and every year to illicit petroleum activities by OMCs who evade taxes. To deal with the menace, the Vice President, together with the National Petroleum Authority, launched the National Retail Outlet Fuel Monitoring System. Let's take a listen. Captains of industry, the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. I'm honored to be here. I'm very excited, actually, to be here as the special guest of honor for the launch of the National Retail Outlet Fuel Monitoring System introduced by the MPA. I'm informed, of course, I'm aware of the hard work that has gone into putting this initiative together. And I'm very glad to see it come to fruition. You've seen the system that was shown us, and, and we were given an interview, in, an overview by Mr. Francis Bullen, who has been the consultant for the project. Thank you very, very much. And I, do, I just want to, to s applaud the former CEO and the board uh, and the staff of MPA. You keep raising the bar higher and higher. I'm, I'm very, very excited um, about what you are doing. This innovation by the MPA will not just improve petroleum the petroleum product distribution system, but it will also go a long way towards the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. It certainly would help the government in its effort to maximize revenue mobilization from petroleum products. Taxes and levies on petroleum products are major sources of revenue for government in pursuing its development agenda. Actions, decisions, and policies of individuals and corporate bodies which result in petroleum product distribution leakages and associated revenue losses to the state have serious negative effects on the development agenda of government. In fact, between 2015 and 2019, it is estimated that government lost a total of 4.7 billion Ghana CDs in tax revenue as a result of illegal activities in the petroleum downstream sector. And this sector has been bedeviled. The illegal activities take place because there's a lack of transparency in many of the activities across the value chain. And so once people cannot see what is going on, uh, then the illegal activities tend to prosper. So it is in this context, and I remember in 2017 when the MPA was at the economic management team for discussion on how do we deal with these matters. It was very clear that we thought that to bring transparency and ultimately accountability, MPA needed to embark on digitization of the processes as far as fuel distribution is concerned. And again, I must really commend them for what they have done. They've done many projects, including the ERMDS and so on, uh, that, have, that have really uh, digitized their processes. And, and, and we think we are in the right direction. In fact, in January last year, I recall that I had the pleasure 
of launching the control center for the electronic cargo tracking system right here in this auditorium. And what we are launching today is just a necessary uh, and, and, and logical follow through of the ECTS, the electronic cargo tracking system. Because what we are launching t here today with this initiative of the retail outlet monitoring system is we are now going to be seen, as we said, we will, the ECTS, we are looking at the trucks taking the fuel, but with the retail outlet fuel monitoring system, we are seeing where the fuel has been put and monitor the, the fuel over time. So with this initiative, we are looking forward to blocking revenue leakages and improving revenue mobilization that would contribute to the government's efforts to providing social services and funding for infrastructural development. I mean, ultimately, what excites me about this system uh, and, and, and how it has been put together, because it's, it's a very, very effective way of checking all these illegal Well, the Director of Safety Services at the MPA has been detailing the extent of damage illicit activities have had on Ghana's downstream petroleum industry. The authority carries the task of ensuring regular supply of petroleum products to all parts of the country, as well as achieving an efficient petroleum products distribution system. The authority has an obligation to ensure that the industry continues to remain robust and profitable. We have achieved some successes with the deployment of technologies, such as the installation of bulk road vehicle trackers, petroleum product marking scheme, electronic cargo tracking system, where we had our vice president launching sometime last year, and the Enterprise Relational Database Management System. For example, the deployment of the BRV tracking system is saving the Unified Petroleum Price Fund, that's the UPPF, about 10 million United States dollars of false claims annually. Your Excellency, the implementation of the price liberalization policy in July 2015 has brought about keen competition amongst petroleum service providers. The keen competition among these service providers has resulted in a price war, which drives the service providers to look for cheaper sources of fuel in order to beat each other on price. Some petroleum service providers have unfortunately resorted to illicit activities in order to stay competitive in price. These petroleum service providers who have looked beyond reducing their margins to compete on price are rather creating avenues to exploit the petroleum tax system by dealing in petroleum products acquired outside of the authorized value chain and therefore evading paying petroleum taxes. The key supply and revenue leakage avenues are illegal imports. That is imports via unapproved offshore routes, notably along the shores of Takrade, Tema, Pram Pram, and Aflao, and even at the country's main ports at Tema and Takrade. Your Excellency, any keen observer of trends in the downstream industry would have noticed that the volumes of petroleum products recorded through authorized structures dropped from 3.528 million metric tons in 2015 to 3.329 million metric tons in 2016. Well, let's still stay a little longer on matters regarding power because following the ongoing plant maintenance 
and upgrade of power equipment by Greco and the electricity company of Ghana, some power experts want a timetable for the intermittent power supply. According to them, the present power challenges in the country is practically doomed so and therefore a shadow will enable consumers to plan well. Of course, Nana Emoasi the seventh executive director for the Institute of Energy Securities, who tools this particular line of argument. But joining us via Zoom this afternoon is uh, Dr. Yusuf Suleiman, an energy expert, to share his thoughts on this pressing matter. Doctor, we're so grateful that you joined us via Marketplace. First of all, considering what's going on in the power sector, do you think Ghana is sort of following the best practices from around the world? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Charles. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to your cherished viewers and then listeners in Ghana and across the globe. Um, um, yes, um, I wouldn't say Ghana is off the tangent with respect to best practices, um, but I believe uh, there's so much we can still do to make sure that we are efficient. I mean, uh, we are operating a very unique system um, whereby some portions of you know, the value chain is in a way liberalized whilst others, other portions are strictly regulated. So in that kind of chain, it becomes very dicey and a little bit difficult, you know, to maintain uniformity in terms of efficiency. So I would say there's room for improvement in each of the value chain, as in generation, transmission, and distribution. And so because these chains are intricately linked and seamlessly linked, you know, any inefficiency in one portion of the generation or the... Or the, or, or the supply chain will have a cascading impact on the other portions and overall it will have a cascading impact you know on what the end consumer pays you know as electric electrical tariffs so i will say that yes um there's a room for there's so much there's massive room for improvement because we are operating the hybrid system and hybrid system is quite critical if you don't manage some portions well, I think uh, you will have your you will have some difficulties. And well, I think that's what we are facing now. But you know, businesses have called for a shadow to aid in planning. And of course, Greco is also insisting there is no need for a shadow. What should be the best way out in, 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 in terms of balance? Yeah, I think um, if you it is I think it's a right call, uh, the businesses call to to get clarity on these issues. Are, 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 are very legitimate uh, because uh, Charles, as you know, I mean, dependable power is key, you know, to business continuity planning and to some extent profitability. If a businessman plans, he plans with respect to the fact that he's going to get a dependable power, you know, consistent power and available power at competitive rates. And so going forward, I think what the, the players need to do is to involve all stakeholders in this issue of planning, because I see there is a gap in terms of communication gap from Gridco and that of the stake other stakeholders. So Gridco has to involve them. Whatever plan that they have, you know, they have to involve all these players and the players who owe this, this, this outcome of the plans. And so uh, what is happening is that players don't know what is happening. So if Gridco can come up clearly and involve the most importantly, involve the players on the way forward, so I think these legitimate fears will be, you know, allayed. So well, the fears are legitimate, and it's a call in the right direction. They well, need to involve the stakeholders. Great. Whatever plan that they are doing, they need to involve them. And but so each, each I, party will own the outcome. I, I believe that you do know that already some experts have argued that the bane of Greco is financing. Of course, Greco also argues that it's about retooling its transmission infrastructure and not really having issues with finance. What's your take on this? Yeah, I think uh, Charles is just talking about the same thing. I mean, you can't retool if you don't have finance. And you will definitely need some bit of financing to retool the system. And so over the years, I think we've, uh, a lot of experts have been calling the fact that, I've been calling to the fact that, I mean, with so much, I mean, uh, focus on the generation to the detriment of transmission and distribution. And what's going on, what, what's, what's happening is that I think the investment within the distribution and the transmission side has not been that massive as compared to the generation side, to the extent that we are having excess power. I mean, we are having closer to 5,000 in, in terms of our potential when our peak demand barely reaches 3,000 megawatts. All right. And so if, 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 if you look at that, uh, just opposing that with the other sectors, I think it is, just, it is just critical that we have investment into the distribution and, and uh, I mean, investment, massive investment into the distribution, massive investment into the transmission. And that means that if you are retooling, and 
I mean, if you say you are ruling, it means that it's finance that you, you need to rule. So yes, inherently, I think we will need some kind of uh, capital injection into that system. Because over the years, I think it's, it's, been, it's been neglected to the, mm. I mean, it's sidelined, uh, you know, we, we have so much focus on the generation well, and sidelined the discussion. Others have yeah. others describe this as a wild imagination, but one could ask the question: Do you think it is high time that Ghana explores some privatization of Greco? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I think um, I, when I started my submission, I mentioned that um, if one portion of it is regulated and the other portions are not, it's bound to be these problems. And now the whole issue about our power generation, ranging from generation to distribution to transmission, is about inefficiencies. Okay. So even if you have the quantum of finance that is required to rejuvenate the system or to revitalize the system, you inject this capital and you are not able to plug the leakages as an inefficiencies. You will come back to not. I mean, you will come back to, uh, to, to, to zero. So I think, yes, going forward, we need to involve private sector. And involving private sector will come when we liberalize the system. Why do we have to leave the distribution system still so regulated? Why do you have to leave the transmission system so regulated? So I think going forward, generation has to be liberated, transmission has to be uh, liberalized, sorry, liberalized, generation has to be liberalized, and then distribution has to be liberalized. If these portions are liberalized, I think what we're going to see is that we're going to have a lot of injectivity of efficiency. And when there's efficiency, we have to, we're going to have cost competitiveness, and that will drive down cost to the end user at the end of the day. I guess we could have more discussion on this, especially with the privatization of Greco, as you suggested. But Dr. Silman, we're so grateful that you joined us. Uh, he is an energy consultant, a petroleum consultant at that. Well, the Bank of Ghana is working to soon halt what can be described as unfair fees, charges, and other practices in the banking sector. This has been captured in the draft document being circulated among the banking sector players before it's finally implemented. George Rafi has more. inputs from players in the banking sector before it introduces any policy onto the market. Therefore, the regulator is going a similar way before this directive is finally issued for the players. The Bank of Ghana and the directive is trying to abolish credit insurance and premium charges by banks and specialized deposit taking institutions, which requires borrowers to hold credit insurance against any eventualities such as death, permanent disability, and termination of employment. The Bank of Ghana noted that even though it welcomes an initiative to ensure credit is against this practice where institutions use their preferred firms and offer price premium charges to customers, which eventually could increase the cost of borrowing. The regulator maintains that this practice, it has also directed that banks are not permitted to retain insurance premiums collected from customers with the intention of implementing an internal insurance policy. The regulator is also not comfortable charging depositors account maintenance fee on savings accounts, which the Bank of Ghana thinks could in the long term discourage the opening of new savings accounts. Other practices that the Bank of Ghana is seeking to stop are charging extra or penalties for withdrawals and transactions done in the banking hall, as these institutions seek to discourage or push customers onto the electronic platforms. The regulator is soon going to hold the practice where borrowers are forced to transfer assets into the name of the financial institutions that they want to secure credit. These are part of several initiatives that the Bank of Ghana is proposing to check some bad practices and charges in the banking sector. It is, however, not clear for now when these directives will fully take off. Consumer trust in fish has waned after shoals of fish were washed ashore across some beaches in the country. Already, the Fisheries Ministry has called for calm as investigations begin on the biological samples of these fishes. Now, this development is already having a dark impact on the industry, which recorded zero growth in 2020. In this piece, we narrate the event as it happened and implications on Ghana's fisheries industry.
uh, I'll say we saw this yesterday uh, around 10 a.m. But normally this used to happen seasonally. So we thought it's, it's normal, as we know. But later we find out that uh, it's not normal because the number of fishes that are coming out and the way they are washing out from the sea is not normal. At, at that time, people have already collected some to, to market and other places, they are consuming. Uh, we thought it would, it would end, but this morning we realized it still continues. So we have to come and stop everybody from picking it. from various incidents will come out. Uh, my department, the Department of Marine and Fishery Science of the University of Ghana uh, is collaborating with IESS of the same university. We have taken samples and as of now, we are almost at the lab analyzing them. The Fisheries Commission has taken samples, the FDA and others, GSA have all taken samples and various labs are, are really on the spot working. So we are hoping that latest by tomorrow or even by close of day, we can pinpoint something. Mm. But for now, to avoid panic, people can go about their normal business. Mm. And uh, the situation is not as, uh, uh, as you know, because the, the, out, the outpour of the fish have ceased for now. It's mm. not continuously. It's that one day that it came in. So uh, it has ceased. So for now, we will say that the sea is okay, people can go fishing. Okay. Hopefully by tomorrow, various reports from various incidents will come out. Uh, my department, the Department of Marine and Fishery Science of the University of Ghana uh, is collaborating with IESS of the same university. We have taken samples and as of now, we are almost at the lab analyzing them. The Fisheries Commission has taken samples, the FDA and others, GSA have all taken samples and various labs are, are really on the spot working. So we are hoping that latest by tomorrow or even by close of day, we can pinpoint something. Mm. But for now, to avoid panic, people can go about their normal business. Mm. And uh, the situation is not as... Uh, uh, as you know, because the the out the outpour of the fish have ceased for now. It's mm. not continuously. It's that one day that it came in, so uh, it has ceased. So for now, we will say that the sea is okay. People can go fishing. And a little update on the fish wash ashore development is that a fish scientist with the Fishers Commission, Dr. Zida, has attributed some of the fish dying to them being stretched out. We shall keep an eye on this one to give you updates in our subsequent bulletins. But that's it for Marketplace. Enjoy the rest of our story, of, of, of our programs. <laughs>